are derailed in ways we were not prepared for. Whether you want it to or not, your brain sorts people by worldviews and opinions into teams. This is not simply tribalism, it goes further. Researchers have called this process social sorting. On the digital town square, you encounter people that express opinions or share information that clash with your worldview. But unlike your neighbor, they don't root for your local sports club. You're missing the local social glue your brain needs to align with them. For your brain, the disagreement between yourself and them becomes a central part of their identity. And this makes it less likely that you will seriously consider their position or opinion in the future. If you hear bad things about them, your brain is much more likely to believe it uncritically. On the flip side, there are people who share your worldview and are maybe even more similar to you than many people in your real life, which makes your brain like them a lot and kind of hyper-align with them. People who think like you are probably good people because you're a good person and whatever social group you belong to is good. So your brain is more likely to believe their opinions. If you hear bad things about them, your brain is much more likely to dismiss it uncritically. The engagement-driven social internet makes it worse because it wants to keep you online as long as possible. And the most engaging emotion is, unfortunately, anger. anger. The more yeah. angry you get, the more likely you are to share and engage. And this leads to social media amplifying the most extreme and controversial opinions. It optimizes... Okay, this video doesn't make me angry, so I don't talk more. This is not only to show us disagreement, but the worst disagreement possible. And because your stupid brain is sorting people into teams, whatever the worst opinions are, it assigns the same opinions to everybody on the other team. What's striking and new about online polarization is that all the aspects of our lives that make us individuals, our lifestyle choices, the comedians or shows we watch, our religion, sense of fashion and so on, are condensed making it seem that they're parts of opposing and mutually exclusive identities. This simplifies and distorts disagreements about how we should run society so much that it often seems as if the people on the other team are actively, willfully making the world worse. That they're almost evil beyond convincing with rationality, facts or civil discussion. Yeah, that's not While you actually are, of course, on the correct team, it may be hard to process that you may seem like that to people on the other team. On a societal level, this is dissolving the social glue that's the foundation of our democracies. If we think our neighbors are evil, how can we live together? This is especially bad in the US, where the two-party system makes it extra easy to think of people in terms of teams. Negative opinion about the other party has reached record highs. Okay, is there something we can learn from this? Is there something we can do? Conservatives, Republican. Opinion part. In the end, it's important to be aware of what social media does to your brain. It's easier to change yourself than to change the world, so you can self-examine why you believe the things you believe, and whether you dismiss or believe information based on who the person is who is stating that information. The internet comes with a lot yeah, of... that's why I should always talk to him, the person, instead of talking to a poem or text messages. ...ups and downs. And just like we had to adapt from living in small tribes to living in cities, we need to adapt to the information age where we have access to billions of people. Evolution is too slow, so we need to find models that work with what our brains are able to tolerate. One model that seemed to work well was the pre-social media internet old people might remember. Bulletin boards, forums, blogs. The main difference to today was twofold. For one, there were no algorithms fighting to keep you online at any cost. At some point, you were done with the internet for the day, and as mind-blowing as this may sound. But more importantly, the old internet was very fractured, split into thousands of different communities, like small villages gathering around shared beliefs and interests. Takes a long time to load the website. Uh, These the villages were separated from each other by digital rivers or mountains. These communities worked because they mirrored real life much more than social media. Each village had its own culture and set of rules. Maybe one community was into rough humor and soft moderation, another had strict rules and banned easily. If you didn't play by the village rules, you'd be banned, or you could just go and move to another village that suited you better. So instead of all of us gathering in one place, overwhelming our brains at a town square that in the end just leads us to going insane, one solution to achieve less social sorting may be extremely simple. Go back to smaller online communities. Because what our stupid brains don't realize 
is that we are actually all on the same team. Humanity on a wet rock speeding through space in a universe that doesn't think about us. We are all in this together. But until our brains adjust to being able to deal with that, we might be better off being a tiny bit separated. Yeah, so that's some grass. One of the worst things about me 